Hello, I'm L.A. Alfonso and I'm a graduate student in the Trent University course called Aging, Disability and Care, where we research and discuss how to improve these areas in our communities. For my knowledge mobilization project, I put together a report on a movie playlist curated by our professor, Dr. Sally Chivers. I thought I'd target this video essay for YouTubers or anyone looking for something fun to watch and also be able to engage with it critically with some context that I'll provide. These short animated films are for a module called Graphic and Animated Aging, inviting us to wonder about the differences and strengths between animation and the straightforward documentary style when it comes to representing age, disability, and care. A different representation of the aging population in popular culture is needed, wrote Dr. Chivers in the Medical Humanities Journal Synapsis. We have previously cast the elderly as helpless. Chivers says we can instead look to them as a massive source of knowledge about how to navigate solitude while aging. She urges us to listen and learn while we have the chance. This playlist of four short animated films brings together ideas about the interplay between aging and disability. It spotlights the role of representation and creativity. It invites us to think about these highly accessible depictions of aging or disability critically. A 12 minute film created by Kunio Kato called Sumik Nole, The House of Small Cubes, won the Oscar for Best Animated Short in 2009. It's a watercolor style animation that tenderly depicts the solitude of aging. It takes place in a half submerged world like Venice. It's a water town where instead of a school bus, a boat picks up the kids when they go to school. The city's architecture evokes how we build on top of each succeeding memory in our heads, losing his favorite pipe forces our silent protagonist to revisit old rooms now entirely underwater, where he encounters forgotten memories. French historian Pierre Nora said, history attaches itself to events, a memory attaches itself to sights. A nostalgia trip comes from visiting old familiar places. Through this unintended flashback, integrating the past into the present has made his life more colorful in the remembering. Just because someone is alone, it doesn't mean they're always sad and lonely. What do you think? Write your comment below. In The Lady and the Reaper, La Dama y la Muerte, an eight-minute short by director Javier Rezio Gracia, delivers a Pixar-style 3D animation short that humorously tackles the topic of death. Death for the lady is a way to reunite with her dear departed sweetheart. Lady willingly wants to go with the reaper. Meanwhile, the medical industry sees death as something to be prevented at all costs. This tug of war is visualized in an expressionistic post Disney style while using character designs with a retro fifties feel. The doctor's cow lick, for example, and the nurses looking like Betty Boop. When the patient gets neglected, twists and turns become literal. Who wins in the end? I won't spoil it for you, but I will say that I found the ending to this thought-provoking. You'll have to discover it for yourself. Just because someone's dying, it doesn't mean they don't want to die. Directed by Nikki Phelan, the Oscar-nominated Granny O'Grim Sleeping Beauty is a beautiful mix of 3D and 2D animation. It's a six minute retelling of the story of Sleeping Beauty from the perspective of the uninvited guest. Written and voiced by Kathleen O'Rourke, her performance is the grandmother reading the bedtime story while harboring the exaggerated resentment is brilliant and hilarious. But she was soon to learn that when it comes to the harsher lessons of this life, Beauty is not going to get you very far, very far, very far. Once you get too old, invitations will start to dwindle, according to this narrative. Loneliness and isolation are real. 
just because someone is old, it doesn't mean they want to stay home all the time, right? What do you think? Harvey Crumpet, directed by Adam Elliott, won the Oscar for Best Animated Short in 2003. This 22-minute film, the longest movie in the playlist, is a traditional claymation. Fans of Wallace and Gromit will appreciate a similar type of wry humor as well. It's the life story of Harvey Crumpet, formerly Harvick Milos Krumpetsky, who grew up with Tourette syndrome, meaning he's unable to control impulses like wanting to touch other people's noses. Harvey's life details seem genuine, and the animation underscores the illnesses depicted in the film with humor. His partner's stroke on his 61st birthday left him alone again. It wasn't long before they took him away is one of the saddest lines I've ever heard in an animated piece. This brilliant film then shows Harvey still rebelling in the care home where he ends up. Imagine what kind of impact this kind of honest depiction would have on a child with Tourette's syndrome. Just because you've been diagnosed with a syndrome, it doesn't mean you can't live your whole life. I think animation incorporates humor best. Humor makes some hard truths a bit easier to swallow. The animation style keeps these stories entertaining and regarded as family friendly. Although the themes they tackle are somewhat mature, kids' exposure to life's richness serves them. The speed with which we get these lessons is also quite fast. The entire playlist clocks in just under an hour. What does it mean to grow old? We probably all hope to deal with our aging someday if longevity is a goal. How do we make our communities welcoming to all types of people in different age groups? We'll need to put everyone on the same page about unhealthy stereotypes in the media. We'll need to keep asking ourselves the question, how can we, as cultural critics and producers, move forward a more balanced representation of the aging population? Check out the links in the episode notes to all my references. I hope this gives you a quick primer to looking at representations of aging in animated films a little differently. Thanks to Professor Sally Chivers and my classmates at Trent University. Until next time, let's keep putting the love back in revolution.